Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. Today we have another Conquest release, and surprisingly, it is yet another figure for the Nords. Today we have the Shield Biter, who unfortunately isn't actually in the process of biting his shield. It's already been bitten. You can see he's had a few bites there. So having finished watching the Vikings TV show. I, I feel like I've just gone all in on the Nords lately. Which is funny because I think of all the factions, they were the first that I actually had enough stuff painted to actually play First Blood. Come on, get out of the bag. It's too complex today, I guess. Alright, so what do we got here? We have the core body. Actually, you know what I like? I can actually tell what all of his armor is supposed to be. That's been my biggest challenge with a lot of the Nords guys, is just trying to figure out what exactly they're wearing. So that's a big plus to start off with. Bit of the base. The runes on there. I'm assuming, yes, his foot is going to go in that little hole, and then the spearheads are going to go in the opposite I'll figure out how that goes in. Okay, what else does he have here? We have his actual head. There's a thick beard, a little bit of cleanup there. Sword arm. Again, needs some cleaning. Nothing too drastic, that's pretty easy. Axe hand. Opposite leg. Where does hand go that's going to hold the axe? Hmm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> like looking around. Okay. Yeah. So the shield is actually going to go in that hand. And then we're going to do it, our arm. I don't know my body parts. I do like the fact that it's pretty much that's the only position it's going to have. You're not going to fight and fiddle with it. And finally we have the ponytail and a 30 millimeter base. So... Pretty simple there. I will get him all put together. We'll grab some other Nords, show him how he looks with the rest of the lineup, and see how he turns out. Sit tight. All right, we got our shield biter all put together. At first, I was a little bit hesitant to actually glue him to the base. I thought, mm, well, you know what? It's going to be kind of hard to get at him to paint. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know what? There is pretty decent access to all of his areas and angles so I went ahead and did it my number one concern with this guy was his lack of balance if you look at the way he's positioned even glued on there's a lot of overhang and most of his weight is leaning forward and I came up with a perfect solution you can see he is nice and stable and sturdy and you know what the key was a quarter an American quarter and look at this it fits perfectly the diameter of the bases that Parabellum makes. So quite happy about that and that solved a big problem. I guess if you wanted to get you know some kind of a nut or a cast or something you know counterbalance it I think that's probably a good idea with this guy. And I think the Nords more than any other faction have been the ones that needed a little bit of counterbalance to counteract their kind of top heaviness especially like the standard bearer for the Raiders. One of the interesting things, his armor is a lot more clean and smooth and in a way almost anime-esque. It looks very clean, for lack of better words. And it doesn't really match up with a lot of the armor that we've seen so far with some of the other Nord heroes. It's very patchwork, very piecemeal. Lots of doodads and stuff hanging off of it. The masks, things like that. On the blooded. I hate to say it, I really do need to get the shaman one of these days. Again, you can see just their armor is usually very eclectic, very piecemeal. Whereas his, I mean, there is that aspect to it, but at least like the torso armor looks very anime ish. I dig it, but you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong manga nerd, so what can I say? One issue I had though with him building, other than the fact that he's very, you know, forward heavy, was getting his ponytail attached in a way that actually seemed to fit his head organically and I'm still not 100% sure that it really went in there okay. Otherwise though, you know, pretty nice 
stable, sturdy, solid model after getting that base balanced out, and he looks like he's going to fit in quite nicely with the other figures I've got. Now, if you were curious about using some of these models, such as the Shield Biter, obviously, since that's what we're talking about, in other games, be aware that Conquest is at its own scale. So with a typical GW figure here, you can see there is a bit of a discrepancy in terms of size. If you wanted to have, you know, a man among men, the Dweg Hum after, not Dweg Hum, the Nords, I was looking at a Dweg Hum, sorry. We'll grab a Dweg Hum while we're at it, though. The Dweg Hum... Obviously, the Dwarven faction of Conquest is still quite large, almost in line with a GW human. Um, the Nords are supposed to be descended from the giants and gods, so, you know, they're supposed to have a bit of giant blood in them. You can explain it away that, and if you want to use them as, like, a Goliath or something, it might be an apt idea. Using a Frostgrave model or an actual Victrix Viking here, again, you can see pretty big difference in size. You wanted to use them as a Doton or Giant for maybe like a 15 millimeter or 170 second guy, that might be an idea too. Um, but for games, my thought is outside of Conquest, you know, you have games like Osprey's Ragnarok rule set. That might be a fun alternative use for him. I think since you have, you know, larger than life, heroic, Nordic, Norsemen, Vikings fighting it out at the end of Ragnarok, then that might be a cool idea. So again, my only real issue, like I said, was the balance. And I think if you have a method that you prefer, uh, once that's dealt with, it's a pretty cool looking figure. I haven't had a chance to actually get him figured out how he's going to work in a game of First Blood. I've got my brother getting his spires started, so hopefully we will actually have a chance to get that played out on the tabletop real soon, because I know that's one of the cool things about the Nords is... They are a very versatile bunch, considering, you know, they've got ogres, they've got giants, they've got trolls, they've got werewolves, they've got regular guys, they've got the elite bow chosen types. There's just a huge variety of models available to them. So if you dig the range, if you dig the Vikings, if you dig dudes taking a chunk out of their shield for a snack, definitely something to look into. And the resin is quite nice to work with, too. I don't think I mentioned that yet, but it always is. Anyways, we'll put a link down to Parabellum's website. Check it out if you haven't had a chance. There's a lot of cool stuff there and a lot of background lore as well. And with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlain with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.